Welcome to Worship at First Presbyterian Church, where faith is nurtured, curiosity encouraged, diversity welcomed, and all are loved. I'm Pastor Sue Collar, and the reason my hand keeps moving is Katie, the dog, has decided that now's the moment she wants attention. So she welcomes you to worship as well. Maybe she'll move into the, the camera range in just a minute. So if this is your first time worshiping with us, if you've not uh, joined us for worship before or not let us know how we could touch base with you, we'd love it if you'd text hello to the number on the screen and let us know how to contact you. It gives us a chance to see how we could pray for you, if you have any questions for us, uh, how we can serve you. If you happen to be watching on the 16th of May, tonight is our All Church Trivia Night. We meet over Zoom, and it's just a fun hour of uh, getting together and answering stupid questions and having a lot of laughter. So if you would like to uh, be a part of that event, just go to our website, click the Events tab. It'll tell you everything you need to know to connect. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, May 23rd. And at our in-person service, we're going to be gathering at 10 o'clock in the parking lot have a chance to sing some of our favorite hymns before we finish our worship in the sanctuary. So if you've missed singing in person, grab your mask, join us in the parking lot at 10 o'clock next Sunday. We'd love to see you there. As we turn to our worship service today, we're actually going to be talking about a scripture that's been important for my life. It's uh, one of those that I keep going back to when I think about how I live out my life as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus speaks about his disciples being in the world but not belonging to the world, which to me highlights the challenges of living a set of values that are often at odds with those around me, uh, holding to a way of life that uh, frankly sometimes is often denigrated and sabotaged by the world. So how does one continue to live a life that follows in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, how does one seek to let his light shine through us into the world when there are so many pressures on us to just give it up and give in? Well, there's actually a really clear answer to that question, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But first, let's come before God in prayer and ask for God's wisdom as we worship and as we seek to learn and grow. Let us pray. We do not notice, holy God, but you give us time so we can think about your word. Silence so it may fill our emptiness and wisdom so we know the path to walk. We do not notice, risen Christ, how you have not given us just a piece of yourself or a portion of your grace, but all that you are for us. And yet you regard us as God's amazing gift to you. We do not notice, nourishing spirit, how you remove our fears simply by sitting with us and holding our hearts, or how you swirl around us, pulling us deeper and deeper into your love and grace and peace until we find ourselves rooted forever in the one who watches over us forever. We do not notice, but today we seek to notice. Today we bring all of who we are, knowing that it is treasured by you. And today we also bring all of our attention as we seek your wisdom this day. Amen. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
these past few weeks, we've been spending time with Jesus, eavesdropping on his conversation with his disciples the night he was arrested. Today, we continue to eavesdrop, even as his disciples did, listening in on his prayer to God on their behalf. It's also a prayer on our behalf. So let us listen for the word of God for us today from John chapter 17. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. We've been spending the last couple of weeks listening to Jesus' farewell discourse, the uh, conversations that he had with his disciples the night that he was arrested. And they've been challenging words. Two weeks ago, we heard Jesus talk about staying connected to him so that we could bear fruit for the world. The challenging part of that sermon was that it can be very tempting to hoard fruit just for ourselves. You know, the really good stuff we want to keep for ourselves. God's love is for us, the insiders. Uh, God's forgiveness is for us, the ones we already approve of. God's justice is for us, the ones we've already deemed to be deserving. But then we have to put those other words of the gospel next to that. For God so loved the world, and not just us. And in the Gospel of John, this is when it gets really uncomfortable, when John uses the word world, he's not talking about the, the globe, the earth that we all live on. He means specifically those forces that are actively antagonistic to God and God's ways. God so loved that world. And we are called to bear fruit for that world. Let's just move on from there. Let's not spend too, more time, uh, too much more time getting uncomfortable thinking about what that means. So last week we talked about what love requires among ourselves. Jesus specifically said, love one another. Love the one who will betray me tonight. Love the one among you who will deny me tonight. Love the ones among you, all of you, who will abandon me tonight. See, two weeks ago, Jesus talked about bearing fruit for the world. Last week was about what that fruit looks like among us. And it was a challenging message, because who among us hasn't had times when we found it difficult to love someone we shared a pew with? Sometimes things hit a little close to home, don't they? That's not good or bad. None of us is perfect, and walking in Jesus' footsteps is not always easy. So when the gospel makes us uncomfortable, 
It's just a sign that we've got some work to do to continue uh, growing in faith and discipleship. You know, I'll be honest. Many of the sermons that I preach make me uncomfortable because I know I still have work I need to do too. Well, today, we're going to finish up our mini-series on Jesus' farewell words to his disciples. I hadn't really planned on, on this as a series. It just kind of kind of came together that way. And I thought, let's end on a good note, one that may not be quite as uncomfortable as the last two weeks. Because after telling the disciples to love the world and love each other like he loves them, he prays for them. He prays for them because he knows it's not going to be easy. He knows loving each other will not always be easy. He knows being his love in the world is not always going to be easy. He knows we'll face a lot of pressure to, to compromise and to abandon our faith and, and to hide his light. I'm sure you've experienced moments like that. I think we all have. Ever been in a group of people who are laughing and joking and in the process ridiculing somebody? Well, even though you know you should say something about how wrong that is, you stay silent because you don't want to be the odd one out. Ever turned a blind eye to an injustice because you didn't want to get caught up in it or you didn't want to become a target of it? Ever hold back sharing your faith because you didn't know how it would be received or because you didn't feel confident in your words? What if somebody challenged you on one of your beliefs? Would you be able to defend your belief? Do you ever simply just forget that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ? And you just go about your life as if faith had nothing to do with your daily living? In Jesus' prayer, he says, I'm no longer in the world, but they are. So God protect them. Remember, the world of John's gospel is a world that's antagonistic to Jesus. We live in a world where love is conditional, where forgiveness is a taboo word, where grace is a sign of weakness, where reconciliation and compromise, it's amazing, but they're almost bad words today, and destruction is good. Don't compromise, just either win or destroy, preferably both. That's the world we live in. We live in a world where uh, when someone else does a generous act, we say it's noble, but when we are asked to do that, we find all these kinds of reasons not to do it because, well, we can't help that person because they're just lazy and they're just taking advantage of the system. And let's not forget, we live in a world where the church and Christians often look down on rather than looked up to. This is the world we live in, and we're a part of it as much as we are also not a part of it. So to say that we follow someone who put all those things, love, grace, compassion, reconciliation, who said those things are the most important things, to say we follow that one, it's not easy. It puts us at odds with the world. And when we do try to live out those values, in a very real way, it judges the world, and we all know how well that is received by others. So when we feel in the minority or when we just want to belong, there's a lot of pressure to just stay silent or to give in and go along. So Jesus asked God to protect us. Protection may not mean what you think it means. My ideal definition of protection is God builds a wall around us that keeps us from harm, that keeps us from uncomfortable situations and hard choices. I would love it if God would build that kind of a wall around me. But that's not what the word means in the Greek. The protection that Jesus prays for is for God to protect his disciples from stumbling. Give them strength not to give in. Give them courage when fear gets the better of them. 
help them walk in Christ's footsteps, even when all the forces of the world are against them. You know, I stumble every day. You know, sometimes I'm aware of it. Sometimes I make a conscious choice not to speak up, not to intervene, not to help. The price just feels too high or, frankly, it sometimes just takes more energy than I want to give at the moment. I stumble a lot. I'm grateful for Jesus' prayer. I can use all the help I can get. But in order for me to benefit from Jesus' prayer, I have to remember who I am. We have to remember who we are. We are chosen. We are chosen by God to be a conduit of God's blessings to the world. Lest anyone think that means we're better than anybody else, surely God would choose the best to convey blessings to other, others. Remember where we come from. We come from the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a family well known for cheating, lying, swindling, murder, and rape. That's our history. That's who we come from. We are not chosen because we are better than anybody else. We're chosen because in God's unfathomable wisdom, God decided that people as imperfect and as flawed as we are were the perfect vessel to share God's love with the world. Go figure. God knows we're not perfect. And thus Jesus' prayer to protect us from stumbling. Because we will stumble. But nevertheless, don't ever forget that whether we stumble or not, we're still chosen for a purpose. We are set apart to carry on Jesus' work in the world, to love the unlovable, to lift up the lowly, to empower those who have no power, to reconcile broken relationships, to love as generously as God loves us. To let Christ's light shine through us. And to help people experience a taste of the kingdom of God. The world God desires for all people. I wonder how many of us wake up in the morning and say to ourselves, Remember, I am chosen. I am holy. I am a vessel today for Christ's light to shine into the world. I am the conduit today for God's blessings. If you do wake up and remind yourself of that every morning, more power to you. You are a step ahead of probably 99% of us. Why don't you try adding to that? And I remember God is with me. God is with me. You see, that's a lot of what Jesus' prayer was all about. It's telling his disciples that they are not alone. It's not all up to them, and it's not all up to us. God is with us. So the challenge that comes to us from this prayer is to remember who we are and then start to take small steps to live into that identity, to live as God's chosen people. Maybe that means that this time you don't confront someone tearing somebody else down. Maybe you just walk away this time. It's a start. Maybe you don't write a check for thousands of dollars to the food bank to feed the hungry, but you still give something. It's a start. Maybe you don't immediately embrace that person you have an issue with. Maybe you start by simply asking God to change your heart in relation to them, to change your attitude to them. It's a bigger start than you may realize. Jesus simply asks that those who would follow him love the world as much as he does. He doesn't ask that we're perfect at it. He doesn't say, don't ever make a mistake. He prays for God to help us so that we don't stumble. But of course, when we do, we know God's forgiveness is always there. 
So when you find yourself in a situation and you wonder what Jesus would ask of you in that moment, at that time, ask yourself a different question. What does love look like? How can you love someone in that moment with the kind of love Jesus has for you? And if you need to take small steps to do that, that's okay. That's how we grow. The more small steps we take, the more sure we become in our walk, the more we learn to love as God loves, the more trusting we become in God's presence to help keep us from stumbling, and the more the world is blessed and changed by our living. So start where you can. Don't be afraid to take small steps. Don't be afraid to take it slow. But remember who you are, and remember that God is with you. Remember that God is going to help you not stumble. And when you do, God will be there to catch you. There's one more part of Jesus' prayer that I want to mention before we wind this up. He prayed that we might be one with God as he is with God. Think back to the image of the vine and the branches. He's praying that we stay connected to the vine we stay connected to Christ so that Christ's life and God's power can flow into us and eventually out of us. But Jesus also prayed that, that we would all be one, that we would be connected to each other, that we would be there for each other. Your Life Counts is an organization that helps teens deal with peer pressure and on their website is a story from 17-year-old Brad. He said, my peer group wants to make a difference. We're all doing well at school. We all want to keep it that way. We know there are bad things out there, and we want to help each other make the right decision. My friends are like family to me, and we all look out for each other. It's what keeps me calm, because I need them to support me when I need help, I'm there for them when they need me, too. He says it's cool and it works. You see, I think that's a picture of what Jesus was praying for, for his disciples, for all of us. There are bad things out there. And we want to help each other not to stumble and not to give in. When the world tries to tell us that we should choose a different way. Remember, we have a community here who will stand with us and encourage us and grow with us. We are holy. We are chosen to bring God's love to a world that is in desperate need of knowing what true love is. Because it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to live that way. And we need each other as much as we need God. It's not easy being a light in a world that keeps trying to put out the light. It's not easy to love when others are preaching hate. It's hard. And it's tiring. And sometimes we pay a high price for trying to live as followers of Jesus. And we need a place to come to, and we need a community to surround us when we need rest and support and courage and energy and wisdom. We're in this together. Let's be there for each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's help each other. Let's pray for each other. Because it isn't easy, but it is so worth it. When we're able to let God's love shine through us, even dimly, and see it reflected in the eyes of someone who forgot what it meant to be seen, it's we who receive a gift. When we're able to stand with someone who's being bullied and show them with more than words that they're not alone, and then we see them stand up straighter, We've brought the world a little, little closer to the kingdom of God. 
when we're able to love someone the world tells us is not worthy of mercy. And we then see that person rise up in response and start living a healthier life and a restorative life. We've been a blessing not just to that person, but to the whole world. When we're able to be God's presence to someone who's grieving and see them find comfort in that, we've given a gift beyond words. And all of that changes us because we can then see what God is doing through us. And when we see what God is doing through us, it's easier to take that next small step because we'll have learned that no matter what powers are working against us, God's power is greater still and God is with us. So may God protect you from stumbling. May God give you courage when you are afraid. And may God walk with you as you learn to walk in faith, in hope, and in love. As Christ prays on behalf of all of his disciples, let us pray on behalf of all those whom God loves. God of grace, the world is full of those who delight in your teachings and those who scoff at your ways. We pray that we might meditate on you day and night, that we might be an influence for good in the world. May we be like trees planted by streams of water. God of wisdom, the world is full of those whose faith seeks understanding and those who discard the truth. We pray that we might receive your word and know that you are the truth that transforms lives. 
God of justice. The world is full of those who seek to do what is right and those who seek only their own self-interest. We pray for those who protect the innocent and seek to overcome systems that oppress. May we carry your light until all may see your way. God of healing, the world is full of those who are sick, injured, alone, and in need of care, and those who dedicate their lives to caregiving and healing. We pray that your holiness and wholeness will draw near to, will draw near to all those who are in need, that they might be filled with your presence. God of unity, the world is filled with those who claim that they belong to you and those who actively work against your plans and purposes for a new creation. We pray for reconciliation, courage, and faith for your church, that your followers will be sanctified in the truth and that we might proclaim the good news of redemption in you with great joy to a world in desperate need of good news. As Christ prays on behalf of his disciples, we lift up to you in silence the prayers of our hearts for those we know and love, for the world that we live in, trusting all to your protection and care. Hear our prayers and give us confidence and courage that we might join our voices together, praying with the words that Christ himself taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The light that shines into the world shines from many different sources. It shines from individual acts of kindness and love and caring and mercy. And it shines through corporate acts to feed the hungry and provide health care. It shines through opportunities to learn and grow in our faith together through worship and through classes. There are many ways Christ's light shines into the world. We as First Presbyterian Church are privileged to be a part of shining that light. But it is one of those things that we are only able to do with your support because together we are the church. And together when we pool our prayers and our resources, our time, our energy, our money, we are able to do amazing things and to share God's light and love with the world. If you'd like to be a part of that, we welcome your partnership. There are many ways you can give your dollars. That's uh, online. You could mail. You could text it in. Uh, whatever works for you. And however much or however little, it all gets pulled together and it all makes a difference. If you would like to offer other kinds of, of contributions to the mission that we have of shining God's light, just contact us here at the church and we'll talk about ways that you can be more involved in living out your faith through the ministry and mission of First Presbyterian Church. The reality is it is not easy to be a follower of Jesus Christ in this world. There are so many powers that are working against us, so many moments when we want to be faithful, we want to take that next step, and yet there's just such a high price to pay to do it that we stumble and we fall back. It is not easy being a follower of Jesus Christ in today's world. But what a difference we make in the world when we take those small steps and we crack open that door and we shine a little bit of light. It truly does change lives. So 
as we go out this day, my prayer for you is that God will protect you from stumbling, that God will guide your steps, and that you will know that you are never alone. Amen.
for joining us at First Presbyterian Church, where faith is nurtured, curiosity encouraged, diversity welcomed, and all are loved. Find out more about us at fpclincoln.org or find us on Facebook.